Hello and welcome to my channel History and Guys and today I want to give you another update on my hobby activities and it has been a while since I've done the last one, actually two months ago really. So this will be a long one and before we start maybe just stop the video for a second and grab some hot drink uh, or some cold drink maybe because it's very hot here in Europe and I suspect elsewhere as well. Now the first uh, thing I want to talk about today obviously is what I've done in the last two months and it has been quite a bit. So let's have a look at the first uh, bunch of miniatures that I painted. And those are the Pack 40 for ball action for my German Grenadiers. The Pack 40 is a 7.5 cm anti tank gun, was pretty widespread use used in um, um, carriages like here but also on a lot of vehicles, a lot of tanks were using this gun and it was a pretty good gun throughout the war so it's gonna play an important role hopefully in my ball action army as well. And you can see that I used a piece of a trick as well and that has really two purposes. First of all it does hike a little bit my mishaps with building it because the bottom plate kept sliding downwards and it's a little bit an, at an off angle right now but you can't really see it because it's hidden by the cover and the other idea obviously is just to build a little bit of um, scenery um, and uh, tell a story obviously a lot of times those kind of guns would try to use the natural surrounding as a cover because once you got detected and got shot by HE you would probably not survive very long and those guns are not mobile at all I mean they are really proper cow guns you can't move them like the smaller anti-tank guns that were in use in the early part of the war. Now the next piece is a 81mm mortar and at least from my first impressions from my ball in action introduction video uh, game is really that like this is probably the even more important addition to my army because this seems to be featured in a lot of lists in a lot of armies because it's a very useful uh, weapon to use. Um, um, it was actually fun building it. I really like the metal miniatures from Warlock Games because I have the feeling that they have a little bit more detail especially when you look at the um, uniform details like the color insignia or the shoulder um, uh, pieces where you can see the rank. So it's a bit easier to paint in some ways because the details have more depth as well in certain ways. And um, I think the, generally the, the way the gun crews are built for bolt action, they are always very characterful because they um, really give you an idea how the, the, the guns are served by the crew. And um, yeah, I hope you like those two additions to my bolt action army. They will certainly not the, be the last ones. I have an idea for the upcoming months uh, along the uh, OPC. I probably will paint some up some magic for the next month and then um, I think there are a couple of vehicles I still have so there will be one or two vehicles for September or October, I can't remember really. Now, as you know, the other big project I'm running right now is uh, my Saga army for Age of Hannibal, namely my Carthaginian army. 
And for this one, I think it's up quite a bit over the last two months. The, the last edition being a uh, whole bag of infantry uh, Numidians, or uh, Numidian infantry rather, <laughs> sorry. Um, and uh, normally I don't really paint batches of more than 10, 12, maybe 15, and that's already a lot. But I decided for this one I would do the whole bag in one go, which is 24 miniatures. And it worked out quite well because they are not super geekers, they don't wear, uh, carry a lot of kit really, it's really mostly tunic, the Japanese, a small belt and, and skin, <coughs> and then obviously the shields. And with the shield design I kind of follow up with the steps that I did earlier on with the other Numidians that I painted, namely um, it's a little bit um, splattered. Uh, like a almost a jabbing technique like I use for the vehicles and I think it comes out quite nice I'm not entirely sure about the wreck on the shields but I think it's okay and I will leave it like that uh, overall I think it's uh, they work fairly nicely and they are a good addition to my to my army because they can serve as contingent warriors on foot and um, that's uh, important building uh, stone for the Catholic Union army in Saga. Now, before I painted the Numigans, I actually painted uh, eight house guards on ho horse, so uh, cavalry, for the, my Carthaginians, and they are from the Roman Republic cavalry kit uh, from Victrix, which they also advertise as being useful or useful as Carthaginians. And what I did is I mostly use the uh, muscle curers and um, other kind of harnesses and only a couple of the male uh, armor um, basically for the second rank because I think it works a little bit better if they have a slightly Hellenistic look and in hindsight maybe using the Hellenistic cavalry would have also been an option anyway I think I they turned out quite nicely I really like the Victrix horses as well both for the Numidians they are a bit smaller but also these ones and um, yeah, I hope you like them as well. I think they will work very nicely and the only thing I can really see them, see me replacing them at some point are the VNV cavalry um, because they look really nice. A club maker of mine has them and they're gorgeous as well. But the big trick stuff is really very good as well and they're paying up very nicely. Now, on top of this uh, cavalry unit, I also painted a commander, and this is a miniature metal miniature by a Stronghold Terrain, and it's supposed to be Hannibal Barker. And you can obviously see that it's him because he has his eye patch, uh, and uh, there's a story that he lost his eye um, due to uh, some kind of fever, I believe, that he got when he was traveling through the swamps in Middle Italy. And, um, so it's a fairly noticeable feature at least of the um, Hannibal post uh, Lake Trasimene I believe. So for Kange for example it would work very, very well. And the miniature is really nice. Uh, the cloak is a little bit weird but uh, weird in a way that it's not like it's normally sculpted on miniatures not that it's uh, weird in terms of how it really should look like because it is actually quite realistic I feel the way it's, it's, it's uh, sculpted here. And um, here you can also see that I haven't really finished the base yet, simply because I want to redo the bases on all the Catholic Indians and I haven't really concluded yet how I want to do it. But I will show it to you as soon as I have come to a conclusion and I suspect I will do it this 
summer because I really want to play with this army. I think it's a lovely looking army with the elephants, with a different kind of cavalry, with a different kind of infantry, and it always uh, it is a, a, a project where you really do have a lot of project creep if you let it be, and I certainly will let it be because the project creep also allows you to build more armies for Saga. So it's a win-win situation for somebody like me, I guess. Now, after I've shown you what I've done so far, I will show you what I'm working on next. And the most important part is uh, my next edition for my Age of Saga, uh, Age of Hannibal Saga army, and those are these ones. These are, I hope you can see, there's already one color on top of it, I primed them brown, that's why they look more geekers than they really are right now. Um, those are Balearic Slingers, also from Victrix. And like the other Victrix models, they are very nicely sculpted, they have a lot of detail and they do actually have a little bit more uh, equipment than the Numigian. So it will take a little bit more time, but I'm fairly confident that I will finish them off by the end of the month and that will then also conclude my contributions to the Saga army muscular held by Stronghold Terrain. And I'm very happy with what I've achieved this year in the hair show because I really finished my first step in the, or my first project stage with my Saga army and I now have a playable army for Age of Hannibal and I think a very nice playable one as well with quite a few options already and I will add to them later as I mentioned before. Now the other project that I have uh, and that will be part of my journal in my summer project, uh, well hobby activities really. That is Battletech, and um, I bought quite a bit of Battletech in the last month, I will show you later what I bought, well the last two months really, but for me this one is the next project, it just passed Prototo, so as a part of the whole project. This is a Clang Mac um, from uh, one of the Clang Mac boxes, and I've primed I think 20 of them already, so that will be quite a la large paint game project as well. But the battle tech stuff does paint up very nicely and I am fairly confident at this point that I will be able to finish that one before the Kickstarter arrives because unfortunately the Kickstarter for us poor Europeans is very much delayed and I think the communication from CGL there could be a bit better. On the other hand I have a lot of miniatures here in the, in the room so I will not run out of options to paint. Having said that, there's another Kickstarter I'm waiting for and that might become a summer project as well depending on when it arrives and that is a By Fire and Sword Kickstarter. Now here I'm a little bit more confident that it will arrive in, uh, well, maybe not in July anymore because it's only two weeks left, but certainly at some time in August because I've seen shipments arrive to European backers within the next last, I don't know, two, three weeks already on Facebook. And um, I understand they are shipping it in waves, so it's not uh, doesn't mean they have forgotten about me. It's just like I didn't uh, pull one of, of the longer straws, so to speak. Uh, but that I'm very much looking forward to that as well because I, I haven't really painted 50 millimeter yet, and this will be like um, a new kind of experience, and it will be also kind of a trial run for a certain years war project that I still want to do at some point. And one option is doing it in 15 millimeters. But that's about all that I have planned so far for the 50 uh, for the next months in my hobby. There's some construction, current construction project as well, but I will show it to you when it's like a more progress stage really. Now, when it comes to purchases, uh, this has been a very active 
eight weeks as well and there were lots of different things that I got for myself actually. The first thing I already partially showed to you and those are battle max and um, because I magnetized the battle uh, max, max I also bought a lot of magnets so this is the first um, purchase. I think those are like 250-300 magnets so really a lot and I can magnetize stuff as well like for example I want to magnetize the vehicles and the turrets of the vehicles of the Battletech Kickstarter when they arrive and for that I will use probably like one millimeter maybe three millimeter magnets so they will come in handy for a lot of different projects and for example when I um, magnetize the bases of the Battletech miniatures I always use and you can see here this is a uh, yeah, this is a two millimeters um, times I think five millimeter magnet in this case, but I've also used two by three millimeter uh, ones. The important aspect is really that they're two millimeters, so they are flush with a hollow base, and then they stick very well on metal plates or on mag uh, ferromagnetic sheets. So uh, that's very easy then to transport them around, especially because they can take a little bit of a beating as plastic miniatures. Now the next thing that I got was more battle tech. And just as an example, sorry about the noise, I bought this box. This is a, a standard uh, stacking box or a larger stacking box from battle tech. Uh, they have two stacking boxes, one really small one with two miniatures and this one with eight miniatures and a little bit more stuff in there. There are some maps in there and, and some ma materials. This is not the Scanlock one, this is a 40 any, uh, 40th anniversary box because Battletech this year celebrates its 40th, 40th anniversary as a, as a product. And I think that is a very proud anniversary because, I mean, there are not that many games nowadays around that survive uh, for 40 years and that are actually blossoming uh, over the last couple of years again. And I'm very happy about it because for me Battletech is a very important part of my gaming history. And I bought this box, I think it's very nice, it's a good offer for anybody who wants to get into the game. And uh, I also bought two, three more boxes, uh, length boxes, so I have more inner sphere mesh to paint as well. But they will come after the clan stuff, so we will see how that works. Um, the next thing I bought was, um, I bought a big box, I have the box here, but I'm not going to show everything of it. A big box of scenery because there is a shop uh, called Nano Strategy in Germany that is closing its doors, at least the online shop, and they had have or had a huge sale go ongoing, so a lot of the stuff was going for half price or something like that. And since I've been eyeing that kind of stuff for a long time already, because I don't really want to occupy myself with building barrels and uh, chests and that kind of stuff. I can do it if I need to, but I don't want to do it because I don't have that much time. I bought a huge load of crap there. It's not crap, but nevertheless. <laughs> so the first thing, for example, this is a metal casting from Engski casting. Those are, is, are market goods. So if you want to put a market skill on your terrain, like let's say you build a, a, a medieval house and you want to have it as a food vendor or something like that, you can use this stuff to add some detail. Then lots of barrels and chests and this kind of stuff. So this for example is from gravel cars, I suspect it must be resin. And they are nice details, um, really do what they are supposed to do and um, I also want to build some objective markers for uh, bolt action for Saga, especially because Saga has quite a few scenarios where you need uh, crusher uh, markers or something like that. So they will be very handy for that. Then this one is actually, um, you can't really see it that well, like this, you can see the wheels maybe, that's the most recognizable feature of this bag right now. This is a card. So, um, with fruits I think as well or some other goods I can't recall and this looks like a like a basket for example. So this should be very nice as well for um, all kind of uh, scenarios for example. I mean there are is a saga scenarios where you need three cards actually. Um, so that should be good as well. And then I have more more barrels here. Even more barrels. I think I bought way too many barrels. <laughs> 
but maybe I just want to build some, I don't know, uh, beer lager or something like that. <laughs> Uh, chests, um, I think these ones are, might be more modern ones, and this for example is another element of Royal Boy. I know you can get it elsewhere as well from Rubicon for example, those are uh, carbs and stuff like that. So if you want to add some elements to your vehicle, they are really nice. So that's that, and you can see it's a lot of stuff really, I spent a little bit too much money on it, but I think I buy it once and then I'm hopefully good for it. And the last thing that I bought are actually more really useful boxes, I have them here. And I think I've mentioned it before, but I really like the really useful boxes uh, for transporting. And honestly, I don't think I will ever move to a different transport system unless I need something specific, let's say to go on bike or something like that, which is very unlikely. <laughs> Now what uh, else did I do? Well, most of all I had quite a few games on in the last couple of uh, months. Um, I played uh, the Saga tournament, of which I put a video on already. Uh, and if you caught all the details, you might have noticed that I was not very successful. I think I placed 8 out of 10 because I lost the first two games. But it was a lot of fun and I hope the video catches that because uh, that I think is the most important part that you are coming together with like-minded people that you don't see that often because they are from further away maybe and you have a very good day and we did have a fantastic day. Now besides that I had a couple of games of Battletech Override, the last one was actually on Wednesday, so two days ago and um, well it was a mixed experience. The last, uh, the, the game previously to that one I won actually was a very good one as well. I really like the override scenarios and override as a system generally even though it does have its smaller drawbacks as well when it comes to how certain equipment is converted. But overall it's a fantastic system for a good evening in, as a club because it's faster than the classic battle tech and it's bit more granular than the Alpha Strike, which I think is a little bit too simplistic for catching the whole Battletech uh, battle atmosphere and the characteristics of the different machines. And um, the second game yesterday, well not yesterday, on Wednesday, um, I lost quite uh, clearly. Um, <laughs> I lost my first and uh, heaviest mech actually in round three, so the first round where the shooting was really starting due to a hackshot from my opponent and then my Kias just very methodically cleaned up with my um, two lenses. Um, he was able to take the objectives as well much more convincingly than I did. And so I think after round six or seven we called it quits because it would have been very very challenging for me to come back at that point. I don't think I would have been able to clear out his heavy lens that was still basically pristine almost. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, <laughs> that's how it goes. But we had a good evening and a nice check afterwards as well. So I will certainly, hopefully at some point get my revenge <laughs> on my Kias in this one. And finally I want to talk a little bit about the topic of museums and books. Um, well museums are getting with it, a lot of them, I actually was in the um, National uh, Germanic Museum in Nuremberg and they do have a quite, quite interesting art and armor collection there as well. I didn't really do a lot of filming because I was there with my wife and we just wanted to enjoy the, the exhibition. But it's definitely worth going there because they have a lot of different stuff. And I did post a couple of pictures on my Instagram account. So if you're interested in that, just scroll through the account and you'll see some impressions. But I think due to the closeness of the museum, at some point I will go back there and take a little bit of video footage and put it here on the channel as well. Because I think it's a really good museum. Um, now, besides that, uh, there were no museum visits to uh, talk about. I did finish uh, my editing of my two uh, videos about Brussels, and um, I'm happy to see that they were well received. 
Um, so I will definitely make more videos like that. Uh, it just takes me to first to get some, to some museums and get some footage there as well. So bear with me in that regard. The other thing I want to talk to you on the next uh, kind of book and museum related is that I got a book um, which is um, a volume from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, so the mu famous museum in New York. And they, a, a couple of years ago, produced this book, Islamic Arms and Armor. And you can see already from the cover picture, this is a part of an um, Islamic body armor. And on the back of the cover, also very beautiful picture of a dagger and in a, sh in a sheath. And this is a really big volume. I bought it for, I think, 20 euros. It was originally like 60 or something like that. So it was really, had a really nice price reduction. And they have a really beautiful sh book sh store that has all kind of art books and museum uh, volumes there. Um, so if you have something like that uh, in the vicinity, always drop by. They always have some books that are discounted because they have to turn their uh, wears around as well at some point can't just keep growing <laughs> and um, this book is absolutely fantastic i love it because um, I o i'm always a sucker for uh, books from museums if they are well done and this is truly a very very nicely done one first of all the quality of the paper is fantastic it's very thick the print is very nice the, the pictures it's full of pictures I will just show you this one as an example. Um, so this is one of the many pieces here in the um, in, in this volume, and they have really uh, everything you want from a museum uh, catalog or an exhibition catalog. So they give you um, the materials, they give you the background, they give you the provenance, so where this piece was actually acquired from, and um, they have uh, different chapters here. Let me have a very quick look. Um, so, is mail and plague armor, helmets, shields, horse armor, edge weapons, so swords and sabers, daggers, shafted weapons, firearms and archery. The, a lot of the pieces are a little bit later than maybe would really be my core a a area of interest. So they're not really medieval, but Renaissance and uh, modern, uh, uh, early modern period, but nevertheless, I think it's a gorgeous piece of uh, of documentation of this kind of stuff. And I keep repeating myself, but if you can get hang your hands on books like this, they are a fantastic piece for your library as a reference piece, or if you just want to enjoy great pictures of great pieces of art, because they are not just weapons, they are a lot of them are really pieces of art, of artisanship, and I think we are all doing very well if we keep remembering that our predecessors, uh, our ancestors were not just uh, people who were very happy to fight each other sometimes, but they were also very, very gifted in terms of the craftsmanship, the artisanship, and in some ways, since we are miniature painters, at least some of us are also striving to be some kind of artisan, I guess, so it's a little bit like-minded people as well. So that's about it. Like I say, highly recommended and not a disappointment at all. And yes, will be a great piece on my library. And that's it with my hobby update for, well, the last two months, really. I hope you enjoyed this overview. I think it's a hopefully a good and entertaining mix of different aspects of our hobby. And uh, now for summer, like I hinted earlier, there will be a little bit more battle tech for certain. I will do some terrain building and hopefully if it works out, I will have to work some test pieces first. Um, there will be some videos about that as well. And um, that's really the main project for the channel this, uh, this summer. And I also hope to be a bit more regular in terms of schedule because I had a larger, rather long gap and then I have like two or three videos in sequence. Also, I can already announce that there will be a video about from a DBM tournament that is being held, or DBMM I believe, yes, 
Ich kann im Endeffekt jetzt wie in Hack in schon auch auf mit der Snacks zu äh, führt. Und äh, Club Make of Mine ist organizing it and I will be filming on Sunday and put some video about that here on the channel and I hope you will enjoy that fun as well. So if you like the video please leave a like, leave a comment, uh, even if you didn't like it and then tell me what I can do better. And um, yeah, leave a subscription if you generally like my content, it would really help out the channel, I believe, because I'm growing, but I'm growing slowly, and I would obviously, like everybody, grow, like to grow a little bit faster. Share the content with other people who might be interested, and um, above all, stay healthy, stay safe, and see you next time.